I, one of my best friends, Eric, was, was up there last year, and he asked me to share a few words. He wasn't able to make it. I wish he was, because then he did choke up on this Luther masterpiece. <laughs> so, these are, this is from Eric, Coach Ann. I'm sorry that I could not be in attendance tonight to help celebrate a great man and a wonderful coach. I take much pleasure in having my sentiments expressed by one of my teammates, who also benefited from Coach Nicholson's guidance and friendship. My first memory of Coach goes all the way back to the fifth grade at Crestline Elementary. Before he was my coach, he was my PE teacher. And at that day, our PE mission was to run a single lap around the center track. I can't remember if it was designed as a race or just a loop to be run at each individual's chosen pace, but I remember quite vividly that to me, it was indeed the race of all races. And that I felt compelled to impress Mr. Nicholson. I also remember banging my leg earlier that day in recess or something, and I recall telling him that my leg hurt. I wasn't sure how I was able to get to finish the lap. He said something very Mr. Nicholson like, like, oh, get out there and do your best, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Well, suffice it to say, I was perfectly fine, but this running phenomenon was intriguing to me, and I was nervous and scared. My childish instincts told me that I needed to run with a limp just in case I ran poorly. <laughs> that way I had an excuse for the beat everyone by a mile. So I ran as fast as I could with an exaggerated limp for the entire lap. When I finished, was I first? I can't remember. I crossed the line and Coach Nicholson was there, mildly laughing at my performance, which I'm sure was Oscar winning. My feelings weren't hurt. I had seen him chuckle because it was so good natured, I didn't feel foolish. I felt noticed. I felt recognized. And recognized by a man that would later become a central figure in my life. Coach Nicholson didn't become my coach until high school. I was a shy, skinny, awkward kid in my freshman and sophomore years. And running was one of the few things in life that brought me both inner peace while also stoking my instinctive drive to come at life hard and fast by whatever means came natural to me. One of the things that was so inspiring about Coach Nicholson was his willingness to support one and all. There was no favoritism and no lack of attention to those who may have been less inclined to break the tape at the finish of the race. He treated us all as equals and wanted us all to better ourselves as athletes and people. He didn't much tolerate arrogance, but he did nurture confidence. He applauded effort, but did not enable anyone to be less than the best. My distance mates and I will all finally remember the Happy Bunch, a name given to us by Coach. The happiness was, of course, derived by the oh so grueling track workouts that he designed for us. We would all moan and complain and be melodramatic, only to take the track and give it our absolute all every time. The happy bunch gelled as both teammates and friends. I won't delve into the shenanigans we'd get into when we ventured off campus on unsupervised grounds. But such a tight knit group were we that we had happy bunch track t shirts printed. So, with our nickname in honor of our, of our group title, this was the kind of steadfast but lighthearted inspiration that Coach Nicholson instilled in his runners. I remember one of these late spring workouts in very hot weather. We were running hard 400 meter repeats. It was tough, very tough, and we didn't have any extra energy that day to grind for group off. We were just a bunch of focused nerve jobs running and taking it seriously. At one point during the heart of the workout, one of the baseball players or some non-running athlete sauntered over to the track and proceeded to race us distance guys by running backwards alongside us as we struggled through the last 50 meters. It was a mocking display, though in truth I doubt he meant anything meaning by it. He was just having fun, but the coach was not happy. 
As the happy bunch clung to our upright position with our hands on our knees doubled over, doubled over and gasping for air, we listened as Coach tore the backwards runner of England. He must have gone on for at least 60 seconds, about as long as it took us to run 400 meters. Berating Mr. Backwards for his lack of respect for those of us out there busting our tails in the heat to complete this track for half. To the backward guy's credit, he stood there and took his zips like a man with a downcast look. When Coach was done ranting, he slowly walked off the field and back to his station. The entire track and field team stopped to witness the spectacle. And I probably don't have to tell you that the happy bunch, distance crew, were no longer fighting to stay upright. Tall and proud as we were, chest out and jaws firm, breath mastered, and never would you see a straighter run of none forming up at the beginning of that next 400 meter interval. I can guarantee you it was the fastest one of the day. We ran that one for Coach. This is just one of my inspiring examples that I can remember Coach Dickinson as my running career progressed and I entered far off and more distant races. Coach was there when there was no one else available to transport me to and from starting lines. He never protested or criticized any guidance, humble advice, and funny stories. He never put much stock in any whining or complaining. When the going got tough, or when I did win a race that I thought I should have, no big deal. In my senior year of track, I wanted nothing more than to win it all. At the time, it seemed like a really big stretch. But Coach Nicholson did not exhibit any surprise or disbelief to my revelation. He just said, well, we've got some work to do. I was never more nervous than I was that day at Manhood for the state meet. I was going up against two brothers that I wasn't supposed to beat. The coaching advice that I got that day was the best advice a runner could get. He sat me down before the race and said, whatever you do, don't start off too fast. Don't take the lead at the beginning and don't let your adrenaline eradicate all the training you've done. If you're going to beat these guys, you have to race slow. Let them take the lead and stay with them and don't let them get out of reach. And don't pass until the final lap. That's when you make your move. That's when you use the kick you've worked on all season. If you're unsure of when to go, listen for my voice. And so it was. The, last, the first three laps, his wife and brothers did what everyone expected. They led the race one and two. I ran behind them, wanting so badly to overtake them in those first three laps. But I held back because I trusted in my coach. When the gun sounded on that final lap, I felt panicked. I didn't know when to kick. I didn't want to pick, kick too early. I didn't want to wait too long. As I frantically pondered my move, a single, clear, familiar voice rang out over the route, crowd at the packed stadium. It was Coach's voice, emanating loud and clear like some Greek god. <laughs> Like a bell of liberty. The voice shouted, Go, Eric, go now. I have no idea where he was standing at the time, but the voice was all I needed. For any doubt or panic to evaporate, it was what I needed to beat the unbeaten. So thank you, Coach Nicholson. Proud, but humble. Loud and compelling when necessary, but quiet and composed otherwise. Ever sensible, wise, funny, and tell her of tales with a twinkling eyes, a presence, a beacon, a friend, and a voice to rise above all the others and remind his record when his time has come. <laughs>